What's good guys? This video, as you can tell, will be regarding the Shanquella Robinson case. And specifically, in doing a little research um, on another video that I'm working on regarding this case, I came across this article and I wanted to share it on the channel uh, because it has the most extensive information to date regarding the FBI and their process in this case. Now, it came out at 5 o'clock p.m. roughly uh, today, uh, Monday, January the 9th of 2023. So let's just take a look at this article. Now, this article came out today, uh, roughly 8 o'clock p.m. today, Monday, January the 9th, 2023, coming from WBTV3 out of Charlotte, North Carolina. Shanquella Robinson investigation. When could it end? Where does it stand? All right. On the day Shanquilla Robinson would have been celebrating her 26th birthday, her family and friends are continuing their push for justice. That included a balloon release this past Saturday at Beatty's Ford Memorial Gardens in Charlotte. They can't silence her. They can't silence us. You know, justice will be served. Friend Bobby Collins said during the balloon release, in the search to find out what happened to Shanquilla Robinson in San Jose del Cabo, Mexico, there are two investigations, one by the Mexican authorities and the other by an independent investigation by the FBI. This is a little surprising with that video that nobody has broken, said Chris Swecker, former FBI assistant director. If you will, they haven't really rolled somebody over to put it in law enforcement parlance. Chris Swecker was referring to a viral social media video that appeared to show a fight. <laughs> I hate hearing that word. It appeared to show an attack against Shanquilla Robinson and another woman. Since Shanquilla Robinson's death on October the 29th, the world has demanded someone be held accountable. As her name continues to trend on social media, Many have asked, how long does an FBI investigation take? So WBTV3 asked, specifically, former FBI Assistant Director, Director Chris Swecker for an answer. And this is what he said. If this had happened in the U.S., first of all, the FBI wouldn't be working it because it would be a local homicide. But you know, Typically, a homicide investigation like this would go fairly quickly when you have a video like this and witnesses that are available to be interrogated or interviewed. You know, other forensic evidence, maybe video or maybe time logs, that sort of thing. Cell phone pinging, which you see in the Idaho case, you know. All that evidence is available. In extraterritorial cases, particularly involving the Mexican government, which is really hit or miss when you deal with the prosecutors and the federal police down there and the judicial police down there. They're hit or miss in terms of their competence, number one. Number two, and their motivation to actually get moving on the case. So we have to get the evidence in our hands before we can actually introduce the evidence into U.S. courts. That's all done by treaty, and that's ribbons and bows and formal paper requests that go back and forth, back and forth. It's a painstaking, laborious, bureaucratic process. And in Mexico, it's even more so, he said. Chris Swecker says a complete investigation could take months. You get the video. Obviously, you can obtain stored text data, stored email data. People tend to be careless at the moment and then they'll text each other back and forth about what happened or after the fact, you know, sort of just try to get their story together, that sort of thing. So I'm pretty sure the FBI is looking at the electronic evidence very closely. They're interviewing people. I call it interviewing because if you're not under arrest, it's not an interrogation, if you will. It's an interview. You don't have the right to counsel. You can get up and leave anytime you want. 
So there, I'm sure they have already interviewed everybody if they haven't lawyered up. So they've gathered as much of the evidence as they can. I believe at this point that can be gathered in the United States, Chris Wecker said. He also says for an investigation to be started by the FBI, attorney general guidelines are followed. You have to have what we call predication to open up a full investigation, which is reasonable facts that indicate that a crime has been committed. A federal crime has been committed and that's it. I mean, it's not guilt beyond a reasonable doubt. It's not probable cause, just reasonable indications. Then a supervisor can approve the initial investigation, he said. As the FBI's investigation nears the two-month mark, Chris Wecker says it's important to keep the pressure on the Mexican government. When you apply pressure and you pressure the government and you almost embarrass the government, then they get moving, he said. In late November, Mexican authorities did issue an arrest warrant for a direct aggressor, identified only as someone on the trip. In a press release, authorities said investigations and test data indicate that Shanquilla Robinson's death was due to a direct attack, not from an accident. And then it says no arrests have been made. Uh, they did initially report on this story on November the 11th. So I wanted to bring this story uh, to the channel just because I have not heard that much detail coming from the local um, news stations, if you will. And I think it's important to keep listening to what these um, vetted <laughs> former um, or even current professionals have to say about this case. Uh, so long as they have some sort of background in this. With Chris Wecker being the former assistant director of the FBI, it's pretty important, and I would be listening to what he had to say. So, I just thought it, I wasn't even looking for this and stumbled upon it, and so I definitely wanted to bring it to the channel uh, just to share this information with you guys. Uh, I'm also working on two other videos at this time, so I had to stop what I was doing to do this um, because I wanted to get it out there. And I'm going to end this story on that note. Thanks for watching, guys.